Hi, welcome to the Berry Nation podcast, where we support the bariatric community with humor, humility, and honesty. I'm April. I'm Natalie. And today, if you're watching, you see we are welcoming a brand new friend, a fresh voice to the Berry Nation podcast, Miss Spring Court, right? Hi, Spring. Hello, hello. <laughs> we are so excited to interview you today. I have had the honor of knowing you for several years, and you are an amazing human. But you are one of the most skilled organizers that we know. And clutter, decluttering, this feeling that we are always kind of stuffed with either things or emotions is a very common struggle in the bariatric community, also just in like the, the human experience. Uh, and you are an expert in this. You help guide people through the decluttering process, both, both physically, emotionally, digitally, Right. If people are feeling overwhelmed with things or things in their spaces, right, either physical or emotional or digital, you help them clear out that clutter. And what we have come to understand is that if we can clear out some of this clutter from our personal lives, um, we can make more space to kind of do this work of weight loss surgery. So we are thrilled to have you on the podcast so you can kind of walk us through uh, what, what it all means. Uh, so before we dive in, though, I'd love to kind of turn the microphone over to you so you can introduce yourself to all of our friends, watchers, followers, and listeners that have never met you before. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Um, so I'm Spring Courtright, and my business is Tidy Wild Organizing, and uh, helping people declutter and get organized is a passion of mine. I have experienced it myself, where I have moved into a, a house full of stuff, and I've experienced the magic that happens in life after decluttering and making a home for everything in my home, and I also understand the emotional, mental struggle that that all of that clutter represents. So I am really excited to dive into this topic with you today. Thank you. <laughs> we we know that our community is very excited about this. And as, as you continue to listen or watch, you're going to get to know Spring nor, more, but we're also excited to kind of announce um, a really fun challenge that we are launching in January with Spring. So this episode is really going to dovetail dovetail nicely to what we're launching in the community, you, you know, coming up in January. Um, but you know, really, we hope that you leave this episode feeling a little bit more empowered to really think about the clutter that exists in your own life and with some new tools to help you really tackle it in meaningful and, and valuable ways and really lasting ways, right? It's one thing to clean, a, clean up a, a space once. It's another thing to keep it that way for an extended amount of time. So, so we're hoping that, that you guys will all leave this episode with really just that empowerment and new tools to finally tackle that thing in your life that is just dri driving you nuts. So if you guys are ready, I say, let's dive in. Yes, please. <laughs> All right. So you guys know we love to kind of start every podcast episode where, where we define the thing that we are learning about. We want to make sure that we're all speaking the same language. So Spring, will you kind of set us up for success by really helping us understand what is clutter? What, what is it that we're talking about when you say clutter and, and what does it kind of mean? So the, there's a, you know, the online definition, the dictionary definition, I looked it up in a large amount of things that are not arranged in a neat or orderly way, a crowded or disordered collection of things, right? So that's, that's kind of like a clinical definition in my world, in my mind, in my, you know, clients, my work, um, it's much more simple than that. Clutter is just items that cause us mental distress, Clutter, like stuff is just stuff. You can, people, there are, there are geniuses who are surrounded by stuff, right? But it's the mental distress that we feel because of that stuff. That's what I consider to be clutter. Like I have stuff all over my desk right now, but if it's bothering me, if I'm feeling distressed, then I consider it clutter. So in my mind, that's an important distinction to make. That is a huge distinction. And right? if you guys are, are watching on YouTube, you are seeing our faces because we're like, 
<laughs> I didn't really relate to the first definition, the clinical definition. I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's clutter. When you said items that bring me distress, <laughs> Uh huh. I thought about my entire bedroom. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's just chuck it all out. It's fine. But truly, and I, um, Spring, you don't know me very well. I just made a huge move, and and from Seattle to Central Oregon, and I oh. talk about declutter. I just got rid of everything, and oh. I felt so much better. Oh, congratulations so because yes. those were things that I was holding on to and I know we're going to dive into it more but your definition is truly the the missing link I think when it comes to decluttering yay I'm glad that hit you are there positive I mean I think we just we naturally assume clutter to be something negative right are there positive things that clutter can bring our, bring into our lives? Or is it kind of a balance between some things are positive and some things are negative? Does it really just come back to that personal connection or that personal reaction that your stuff is bringing you? That is how I see it. I, I worked with a woman yesterday. Um, it's ongoing. She has intense ADHD. She struggles with depression. Um, she has some memory loss. And for her, she likes to have everything out where she can see it. It does not bother her. I walk into her house and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, but if it doesn't bother you, then, you know, it's, it's everybody else's problem. <laughs> really? You know, it's the same thing as if you, if you're concerned about the way you look, like you can love yourself as you are right? It's when you start worrying about what other people think about you. So um, there can be like clutter is whatever you define it to be. So can it be positive? Sure. If you're a person who needs to have everything out where you can see it, great. If it's so overwhelming, you can't find your things when you need them and it's causing you to stress out and, you know, miss meetings and lose your car keys, then that's where it crosses that line over to not being helpful. So it really is like, I trained with Marie Kondo was awesome. I love her concept of like, let your surroundings, you know, help you feel joy in your life. Let the things reflect back to you, you know, the joy and goals that you have in your life. Right. Right. And also her way is not the only way our, each of our brains is completely different. The way that each of our bodies are completely different. Like we just, the way you process nutrients and information differently, you, you need your things set up in different ways. And so it really becomes this exploratory process instead of a prescribed, it's like a diet, you know, like there's all these organizers and if, if they're saying like, this is the way to get organized, or this is the way to organize, you should have this many things in this way. It's just like trying to diet, like, sure, maybe they'll work for you. And also you need to explore what does work for you and be able to tweak things and know that there isn't like the exact method that I can like lay out, you know, step-by-step step in a book that's going to work for everybody. So, yeah. I have ADHD um, mm -hmm. and there have been times where growing up, um, right, your mom comes into your room, you need to clean up. And it's like, mm -hmm exactly what you said I need to see things mm -hmm. <laughs> otherwise I have object permanence issues if I don't see them they don't yeah. exist <laughs> anymore um but there is a fine line and I'm I'm towing that line mm -hmm. a lot lately yeah. because there's a lot going on up here too but I'm towing that line of like I need to have certain things out where I can see them and also this is bringing me distress. So mm -hmm. I'm interested to dive in a little further to kind of learn how I can find the the happy medium a little bit. Right. Yes. I well, agree. And I'm so um, thankful that you guys both talked about kind of this ADHD and Natalie, correct me if I'm wrong, this like neurodivergent, um, 
you, you know, kind of spotlight so many members of our community are neurodivergent. So many members of our community really struggle with that, but they are looking for a way to, to kind of alleviate, like what you said, I literally, I wrote it down that mental distress, right? I think as a neurodivergent person, you already have a, a different sense of awareness. And when right. you want your space to, to, to help you remain calm and be clear and focused, it is going to look different for everybody. Right. And it's something that we talk about all the time in Barry, in Barry nation, because all of us as patients, we we chose to undergo surgery basically for the same reason, right? Deep down, we we knew we needed help to to fight the disease of obesity that we have, right? So right. that that's the goal. But the path that we take to metabolic wellness and kind of happiness, contentment is different for every single person, right? But the goal is the same. Right. And this conversation is the same. The goal is to lower the mental distress that's caused by the things that we have in our life. Yes. But how we get there is going to be different. Yes. So, right, learning all of these different ways that we can declutter to help us lower that that mental distress. That's what this is about. Not necessarily about following a single pathway. Uh, it's about learning all of the different pathways and then exploring them as we can. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. And um, the place that I always recommend starting is with your why. With your reason that you want to declutter. So there's the mental distress, right? Like I want, you know, I, I want to have less, less mental stress. And I would, I would say, keep asking why, why do you want to have less stress? Well, how is this stress affecting you? It might be, um, I'm, it makes me anxious. What, why do you want to feel less anxious? Well, when I'm anxious, I am much more irritable with my family. Why, how does that affect you? Why do you want to be less irritable with your family? Well, it, I want to like have a loving relationship with my family. I want to, you know, not be irritated all the time. Okay. Why do you want to have that relationship? Because I want to be happy, <laughs> right? I want to be happy. That's really what it comes down to, but you need to find that pathway on your own. How is clutter yeah, it's causing us stress. A lot of us are feeling that, you know, because we live in a, a country where it's like stuff is coming at us like a waterfall, right? So we need to find our own pathway to that deep why that lights a fire for it to be worth it to continue going, digging through the clutter and letting it go. Cause this is not a one and done process. I'm a professional organizer, you guys. And I have piles all over my house. I'm super busy. I'm writing a book, having company over tonight. Like I've got all kinds of things going on. I have clients and one, I don't make it mean that I'm a bad person, which it took me a long time to get here. I got a lot of coaching support to get here. <laughs> I don't make it mean that I'm a bad person. And I also can look around and go, okay, I'm busy. I know that I can clear this and I have on my calendar when I'm going to do that. And I have that deep fire of a why that I want to have an awesome, like incredible lifelong relationship with my husband. And if I have a bunch of crap around, I get really irritated and anxious and I don't thrive. And I also want to serve my clients well. And if I can't, if I have clutter around it, I'm just a pain in the ass, really. <laughs> okay. You've said so many profound things in that, in that statement. <laughs> and as you were talking, I'm just like, oh my God, my brain's on fire right now. But I, <laughs> I, I guess I have a, a follow-up question or maybe a question that should have been asked before. How do you know that clutter could be leading to these feelings and emotions that you're experiencing. And I guess maybe what my bigger question is, is, is if somebody's listening or watching this, this episode and they're going, you know, I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling stressed out or I'm feeling annoyed or I'm just feeling overwhelmed, but they don't think it's clutter. Are there like questions or things that we can be asking ourselves to really help us go like, oh, it could be clutter or, oh no, like I'm absolutely feeling overwhelmed with stuff. And if I worked through that stuff, it would actually help me alleviate these things that I'm feeling. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. I think that's a great question. So it, just to make sure I understand. So you're asking like, if you're not really sure if clutter is the thing that's 
causing challenges? How do you how do you figure that out? So the way that I often um, do this, I have, I mean, of course, I have many different methods that I've developed over the 10 years of being an organizer <laughs> um, and a coach. But um, one of them is when you when you close your eyes and well, first I have people like actually walk through your house, like walk in the front door and you can do this in your own mind sitting on the couch, but walk in, like walk up to your front door, look around, walk through your house. What, like, as you like, you, you walk up to the door, how do you feel? Are you, is, are you looking around like, uh, oh, this is, oh, this doesn't really feel good. And then you walk in the entryway and you're like, oh, wow, there's stuff everywhere. Or are you walking in and being like, oh man, I'm so glad to be home. This feels so good. I'm going to put my keys over here. I'm going to hang up my coat or, you know, like you can pretty much immediately feel how your clutter is affecting you by just letting yourself walk through your home. And actually I call it taking your blinders off, like take your blinders off, put your reality goggles on, look around and be honest with yourself. I mean, that's what we're really talking about here is and it's, I mean, that goes across everything, right? Like exercise, diet, relationships, your job. And the less honest we are with ourselves, the more we buffer, right? The more we do online shopping, the more we eat crap we don't want to eat, the more we do all the things that buffering, the clutter can be part of that, where you're like piling the stuff on because you don't want to deal with the core reality. And that's why having coaching, having support, having a community of people is important because just like trying to, you know, lose weight or get healthy is much more difficult to do by yourself than if you have some support. Same thing with clutter, because it's going to bring up your shit. It's going to, you're, you know, it isn't like you just have a bunch of stuff around just because it's each item is a reflection of something, a dream, a hope, a goal, a, you know, a something that hasn't been done. Each thing is going to bring something. It can be overwhelming, right? And so we avoid it. So what I ask is just let yourself be honest for a minute and think, how is this stuff affecting me? And if it's, if you can see, oh, this is actually affecting my relationships. This is making me want to sit on the couch and eat the whole bag of Doritos and watch nine episodes of Ted Lasso. <laughs> like it might be time to face your clutter, you know? <laughs> I get it. I've been there. <laughs> I I love what you said, Spring, because I am just reflecting on, you know, that move that I did. And um, I was actually talking <laughs> to uh, my parents about like, man, I'm here I moved in with them and their house is a lot larger. It's a lot brighter. It's just, there's, it's a different environment. Mm -hmm. uh, there's more storage. So there mm. is less clutter, all of those things. Um, and I was like, man, I just feel so much better here in this yeah. space. And my, you know, my mom was like, well, your place was tiny. And I remembered like, looking back and thinking towards the end of my time where I lived, there was clutter everywhere because it was just yeah. to the point where it's like, I gave up. I was like, I yeah. don't even want to mm -hmm. deal with this anymore. I'm just going to put my blinders on exactly as yes. you said. And then I, I relate to everything that you, that you said, because I do feel better in this space because there's almost like more room to breathe. <gasps> yes. Yes. I, uh, when, when you were saying that spring about, you know, close your eyes and, and walk yourself through, through your house. When Grady and I designed our house, mm -hmm. I wanted to walk in to my home, have it be expansive and not see a bunch of stuff out. Mm -hmm. Right. Because yeah. when you walk into my, I think, well, spring, you've, I think you've been to my house. I might know not you've been to my house, but right. You just walk in and it's just this big space, but we purposely built it. So there is, there are no cabinets for stuff. There's no place for, for things to go. It is very minimal in that way because mm -hmm. I've kind of done this work about clutter and I realized in my life, I had a lot of stuff and I was accumulating stuff 
because I wasn't feeling good about myself and decisions that I was making. And then I realized this stuff is killing me. This stuff is really keeping me stuck. So I feel like I've been doing that work for some time. And I can say from experience, it absolutely helps me. And um, what I've had to learn is nobody, the person I live with, my husband, who I love dearly, um, has a different kind of idea on like stuff and how to organize. And sometimes his stuff is just overwhelming. But I've had to learn like there's space where I need to allow that to just be because I can't control it all. But I also realize that if I'm stressed out or if I'm feeling a certain way, it's usually because our house is dirty or there's just stuff out. And I've finally gotten to the point where I can tell him I can't deal with with you or with this, or I can't go do this fun thing because this stuff is literally stressing me out. And it is taking all of my energy just thinking about it because it is causing me distress. Mm -hmm. So until I deal with this, put these things away or give it away or throw it away or do whatever, I'm not Mm going to be able to move on to do this other thing. And it's been interesting because the more that I continue to say that, and we've been married 12 years now, even he can tell when his stuff is kind of starting to get to me. And then I can tell that he's like, okay, no, I just need to either like get this in this spot where I know she's not going to be mad at me um, yeah. or we need to deal with this together. Um, so, you know, if you're listening and you're watching this and and you're wondering like, well, how do I do this without my family? Or what if my partner isn't, you know, on board with this? For me, the, that powerful statement was, I can't have fun. I can't dedicate my time to you until this stuff, this clutter is taken care of. So then it was almost like this invitation to either do it together or kind of get out of my way so I can do this. So then I can, you know, have the time for that, which is huge. Cause I know that's a question that a lot of people are wondering. And the, the key there that I heard was that you have, you talk to him about it. It's the conversations, like you recognized it. One, you like took the blinders off, put on your reality goggles and you, you talked, then you were brave because it does take bravery. We are no two people are alike. We're like snowflakes, right? Like we're not going to have the same organizational style as, you know, the other people in our homes, most likely. And so that means having a conversation that's not accusatory. It's not judgmental. It's, you know, it's, love from a loving caring place for for yourself and the other person my husband and I have completely different organizing styles and when I finally said when I finally got honest with myself first and then with him and and said you know having stuff around having a whole bunch of stuff around makes me feel anxious and then I don't I'm not as fun to hang out with but I also like I don't feel like cooking dinner and he loves it when I cook dinner, you know, he, I don't feel like cooking dinner. I'm, I'm not, I'm not as sexually motivated, you know, like if I'm stressed out and I'm feeling anxious, sorry, honey, we're not going to be having fun in bed tonight. <laughs> like start when you start getting like, that's what I'm saying. Like digging down to how does it really deeply affect you and the relationships that you have and not just the relationships, but your business your health, like all the things, your money, your financial situation, you know, like, can you find all of your financial papers? Like there's so much to it, right? But it starts with that getting honest with ourselves and then communicating our our needs and desires and that honest, non-judgmental <laughs> viewpoint of this is what I need. For me to thrive and for us to thrive in this, whatever that relationship is, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I am a a single person, but I am living with my parents and there are times where the kitchen, we have a beautiful kitchen, beautiful Island, you know, all of that, but you know, let them run wild and there would be stuff all over it. (laughs) Uh, And there was one day we were like, oh, we'll eat dinner and then we'll watch a movie. I couldn't watch the movie until, and I, I just got up and I started doing dishes and cleaning and, Mm -hmm. oh, Natalie, come sit down, you know, come relax. And I'm like, I literally can't relax because this is right behind me and it's stressing me out and say like exactly what you said. You just have to communicate that Mm -hmm. with people. And the more you can come from a loving place, again, I know I'm like, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but it's not a dead horse. It's a very live horse. (laughs) Like the 
like the the more deeply you can communicate about this from a place of love and the more you can invite your loved ones to participate in this with you the more incredible the results are going to be in the long run and the more long lasting this is going to be you can you know i think we've all experienced like you can go through and you can like do the mad rush of like i'm going to clear all the clutter and I'm going to make it all look nice. And you like maybe shove it all into that special room or into the garage. right? And then somehow it's like you turn around and two weeks later, like every service is covered again. So to maintain your efforts to do the continuing work, which I encourage you to find another word other than work, (laughs) um, the, the more you talk about it and get other people involved, the more fun it can be. Will and I, my husband and I now, I never would have believed this when I moved in. One of us will make dinner. We love to cook, um, which is definitely a direct result of getting the kitchen like deeply, deeply organized, getting all the stuff out that we never use and making things easy to to find and put away. Um, But we... At the end of the night, before we go watch a show together, we clean the kitchen and we catch up on our day together. We just like, we, we've kind of like fallen into roles. I've gotten honest about, I actually hate doing dishes, like goes back to my childhood, not pleasant, happy feelings. So he does the dishes. I wipe things down. I put things away, you know, like that came from years ago getting honest and being lovingly direct about what my needs are. It has deepened our relationship. Yeah. Being able to, to be that lovingly direct, it's hard with people that we love to feel like we can say things directly. Mm -hmm. Um, But again, to my parents, it's like, you know, I spent a good hour making sure the kitchen is clean so that my dad loves to cook he that's his love language I'm like so I clean so that you were able to cook and I would really appreciate if you just rinse off your dishes and put them in the dishwasher it's clean it's open and like that would really help less like lower the stress on my end and like just last night just my mom just wiped it off put it in and I was like Hallelujah. (laughs) We're all on the same page. We're all feeling like, like you said, everyone has a role. Everyone does um, little bits Mm -hmm. and pieces to, to maintain it. And I think that's Mm -hmm. part of the, it is work, but it's also just like maintenance. Like, like you would take your car in or, uh, you know, you wipe down your floors. It's just, just maintenance. Yeah. It's self-care. It's like brushing your teeth like clearing off the spaces that bring you the most stress, doing that on a regular basis, finding a way to make that happen on a regular basis really is like taking a shower, brushing your teeth, getting dressed, you know, which I understand like with the history of depression, I understand sometimes those things are really big, right? Like the clutter comes way last after like brushing your teeth and taking a shower and eating food. (laughs) Right. But once you're like at the point that you can do those, it is, it is deep self-care to practice clearing the clutter. Those even just like my spaces are like the kitchen and my bathroom counter. Like when it, like everything else can seem like a bomb has gone off. But if I like, if I start to get anxious and I don't have time for things, I just go and just spend some time on those, like maybe put on a podcast or, uh, you know, like, a Spotify station that revs me up and I just get those areas clear and everything feels a lot more manageable, you know? Mm -hmm. I I can agree from personal experience when, when my life feels like it is just kind of unraveling or if I'm just feeling like the walls are closing in on me, Mm -hmm. it's usually because I have not dedicated some, some focus time to addressing the clutter that's either appeared in my physical life, my emotional life, Mm -hmm. or my digital life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was getting so stressed out with my freaking email and I just kept avoiding it and avoiding it. And I had thousands of messages in there. And finally it was like, oh my God, 
this stress, this mental distress that my freaking inbox is causing me is Mm -hmm. derailing my entire day. Like I can't even be productive. And so finally I just said, I am not doing anything today until I clean out my inbox. Woo. Yes. Right. It didn't take nearly as much time as what I thought. It wasn't as bad. I bulk deleted a bunch of stuff and I was like, oh my God. Like again, we as humans do a really great job of talking us out of, of these things because we think they're going to be so big and scary and that we're going to discover something horrible. But it's that anticipation that keeps us from doing things. Yes. But the anticipate, right? It, it like, you know, it's going to be a lot of work, but that anticipation is actually keeping you more stuck than, than if you would just put the time and effort and just get over that little bit of fear to, to deal with that thing that is causing you the mental distress and clutter is absolutely one of those things. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) So spring, where, where do you recommend people start? This was, this was like the, the top question that was asked in the community when, when, when we let them know that we were, we were interviewing somebody uh, with your expertise and very much this feeling of like, I'm just so overwhelmed. I don't know where to start what was mm-hmm. a common theme. Mm-hmm. So how, how do people do it? Where do they begin? There are two different answers to that. One is to think about like, again, like, you know, close your eyes and imagine where you get the most rest or where you would like to get the most rest. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's like your cozy chair, where you end your day, you sit in the, like mine is sitting in the corner of the couch with a cat on my lap, <laughs> watching a show. Like that's, that is a very cozy place for me. So sometimes, or like the bedroom, you know, if I, if I'm not resting well, so those are my two restful places. So if I'm feeling overwhelmed and anxious, just choosing the cozy place and, and, from there, just pick one small place. That is the biggest takeaway is we tend to, like you said, you know, see, we, we talk ourselves out of things and we'll like walk into a room and be like, I don't know, there's so much, you know, like you, the kitchen, right? Like you can look at the kitchen and be like, I don't know, there's so much. And at some point, a lot of times we do just give up. And that's when it's really important to get help or like, you know, get it on the calendar. But you can also allow yourself to move past that thought of there's too much. I don't even know where to start. That's just a thought. You don't actually have to buy into that thought. What's the next thought you can replace that with? That is where I recommend starting. When you're like, I don't know, there's so much. I I don't, I don't even know where to start. Go, okay, where can we start? Or whatever, you like find your own thought that you can have next and just do that one thing. Like it might be um, one square foot of a countertop. It might be making your bed. It might be clearing off a dresser. Like pick one thing and just allow you. And like, well, honestly, one of the easiest tools you can do once you do that, you know, like let yourself think I can actually do something, set a timer, stop thinking about it. Just set a freaking timer and go. I don't care if it's two minutes. I don't care if it's 25 minutes, but set a timer and just don't do anything else. You can get a lot done in like 15 minutes. And one organizer says like, do 15 minutes, take a little break, set a timer for 15 minutes, do that, do that three times, man, you're going to have a different space. So work on your thoughts and set a timer. That's where I would say to start. I am like, I'm like April, just yes to all of this. <laughs> um, again, I struggle with ADHD and the the paralysis. My, my therapist calls it a paralysis because I really mm-hmm. do get in these like, I can't even get off the couch because the moment I do, there's going to be so many things jumping out at me. Mm-hmm. And then again, I can't, there's too much. And I have all those Mm -hmm. thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um, So she suggested just that set a timer for 15 minutes. It's always 15 Mm -hmm. minutes. 
Mm -hmm. how much can I get done in 15 minutes? And then it's kind of like a game. Like I want to feel better at the end. So I'm going to do everything I can in that 15 minutes. And then honoring, the hardest part is honoring the alarm Mm -hmm. (laughs) of like, no, this is an alarm telling me I just need to be done. Mm -hmm. Or, and I'll, sometimes I'll set like a 20 or 30 minute alarm and then honoring that alarm to, okay, we're going to get back up and we're going to keep going. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think that it's so powerful. It doesn't have to be this big whole day of cleaning and and deep cleaning and decluttering and all of this stuff. It's like, you can get so much done in 15 minutes. Yes. So much. Yes. It's that it's that analysis paralysis. And and again, it's comfortable until it's not. It's mm-hmm. comfortable to just not deal with it because we know it's going to be work and effort and it could bring up feelings and emotions and ah. Uh, but the word paralysis is there for a reason. You are going to stay stuck. You are going to remain in that kind of pool of discomfort and distress until you take some action and literally drag yourself, take yourself push yourself, move yourself out out of that. And just picking that one tiny, tiny space. And and I really appreciated what, uh, what you said spring, that first thought isn't necessarily true. Move beyond it and go to the next thought. Right. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I'm thinking about my, my master closet definitely needs a deep clean, even my office. Right. And if I look at the whole room, it's like, Oh my God, there's so much here to do. Sure. I can also do this one set of drawers. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's a very different conversation than this entire room is a disaster. Yes. Right. Right. It's connecting with that truth. Yes. And I want to, there's another really important piece to this. I know I could clearly talk about this all day long, every day. And I do, which is why I have a business doing this. (laughs) Um, But it's, really important, whatever your timer is, whatever your project is, to congratulate yourself. Celebrate the shit out of everything positive you do. Because when we spend 15 minutes and then we go, oh, well, I really didn't do anything. I still look at all this stuff over here. And like, that's like slapping a child. Like I, I imagine like a toddler in all of our brains, you know, they're like running around, like, I just want to have fun and eat cake all day, you know, like, okay, we, we have to redirect and redirect for those 15 minutes. Well, at the end of those 15 minutes, if you're like, oh, you did not do a good job. There's so much more to do. Like, would you do that to a child? And if you would like, please get some therapy because, you know, like, no, let's be kind to ourselves. And the more you celebrate the more you train your brain that this is actually a good thing, this is a fun thing, this is this, you get a dopamine hit, give yourself a dopamine hit instead of slapping yourself, please. Every, every person listening, watching that, this podcast absolutely needed to hear that because we, (laughs) we do a great job of beating ourselves up for so many things in our life. And part of the work of weight loss surgery is doing that. And I think we can get better at being kinder to ourselves if we practice it in other facets of our life that feel unrelated. So practicing being proud of the things that we're accomplishing when we, when we make the decision to declutter will help us be proud of the other things we're accomplishing along our bariatric journey, right? It's practice. The key word is yeah. Practice, practice, practice. And friends, if you are listening and watching this podcast and you are feeling some inspiration or some empowerment to actually dive in and really focus on decluttering, especially in the new year, we have something very exciting for you. Spring is joining us as an expert in the Berry Nation membership community, and she is leading a January decluttering challenge. No joke. She's bringing her expertise, she is bringing her wisdom, her wit, her humor, and her her passion for helping all of us lower the temperature, or as she calls it, mental distress, when it comes to the things in, in our life. 
So if this is something that you know you want to, 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 to tackle in the new year, you are ready to make some meaningful change to really onboard some new learning and to have the support of a caring community behind you as you practice what it means to declutter, join the Barry Nation membership community today. It is a part of your membership. So on top of the other 80 live things that you can go to every single month, you can now connect and learn with Spring every single week in January. She's going to be hosting a, a weekly live call. So just like this, but you get some one-on-one -on -one time with Spring. She's going to be teaching us what it means to declutter all of these different strategies. She's going to be really working with us as we identify a space, either in our, in our house, our homes, our life, our digital life that we want to declutter. And she's going to be walking us through that process. And this is just what you get to participate in because you are a member of the Berry Nation support community. So we are thrilled that spring is going to be joining us. And we are absolutely ecstatic about being able to offer this type of support to, to, to you all, to our community members. So if you're not a member of Berry Nation, now would be a wonderful time to join. Uh, just go to berrynation.mn.co, become a member, join the challenge space. Um, and if you are already a member of Berry Nation, absolutely go join that challenge space so that you can you can hit the ground running. And I'm pretty sure spring, the first day is I think January 3rd. Um, she's gonna be hosting some office hours. You guys, it's just gonna be a, an amazing challenge. And, and hopefully you are seeing just how um, skilled and um, educated spring is when it comes to all things decluttering. So we're just absolutely thrilled for this opportunity. It's going to be absolutely, I know, we're just like, we're beyond excited. I don't even think, I, I don't have a word uh, to, to quite d describe it, but it's something that so many members of our, of our community um, have asked for. And yeah, you are the perfect person to do this for us, Spring. Fabulous. Thank you so much. I know. <laughs> So before before we let you go, we um we are launching a new segment of the podcast and we're calling it Community Connections. So members of the Berry Nation support community or our Patreon supporters, I should say and our Patreon supporters, uh, get a little sneak peek of the podcast that we're going to going to be recording um, in the year ahead. And we asked our community a few days ago, um, what questions would they like to ask you? So we told them we were interviewing this Marie Kondo, you know, I'm organizing expert. Um, and if you were on the podcast with us, what questions would, would you ask? We got a ton. We, we, we got, there's a lot. Um, so what we'd like to start doing is picking one of those questions from the community and asking you live on the podcast. And then we're going to be recording a bonus episode right after this one, where we are going to answer almost all of the questions that came in from the community because they, they were a ton. So I feel like the, the one that we selected to answer on, on, on the podcast, we kind of already talked about, but I'm wondering if there's maybe a little bit of elaboration you, you could offer. One of our members um, asked, how can we declutter when the rest of our family is not on board or supportive? And I feel like we dove in that a little bit with just having an honest conversation. Um, but is there any other little like tidbit or nugget of wisdom that you would pass along to answer that question? Yeah, that is an excellent question. And I get it a lot, of course. Um, so I do always say, you know, do the self-exploration and find your deep whys and then find how decluttering, how clutter affects your relationship with each person in your family. It might affect you differently with different people in your family or in, in with the people in your household. Um, and stepping, there's, Rumi has a quote that's, it's something like, um, Outside ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. That's the kind of philosophy I want to encourage you to do in having conversations with a family. So rather than being like, when you do this, when things are like this and everybody leaves their shit everywhere, then blah, blah, that that's like pointing the fingers, right? If we want to get beyond that to... When there are a lot of things around, it makes me act this way with you. And I actually want to be an awesome mom. And it's holding me back from doing that. Like, 
can we please find a way together to help me be the awesome mom or sister or friend or daughter, wife that, you know, that we know that I can be, I'm not being my best self because of this clutter can, you know, like make it an ex exploration and a, a place outside of judgment. Um, that's the first one. And then the second part of that is start with your own things, go through your own closet, go through your own stuff, go through your own food stash, get your own exercise equipment set up, do your own stuff. And there's a very good chance that it's going to rub off. And then like, yes, I see like it, everybody's involved in the clutter in a house, right? But if everybody sees that you're genuinely like enjoying the fact that you completely decluttered your closet and you're like getting out of the house faster and all the things, it's catchy. My husband now every once in a while he like pulls all of his socks out of his drawer and he'll like stand in the bathroom or in the bedroom like organizing his socks. And I walk in and he looks at me like all sexy because he knows I'm like, that is so sexy. Or I've gone on vacation a couple times and I've come back and he's like, come look at what I did in the garage. <laughs> And that stemmed from one, me being like, hey, I have a really hard time, like, you know, getting in the sexy mood when there's shit everywhere. And also just like, hey, can you do a little bit? And him seeing like, I really thrive when things are put away and organized. Um, so it's that two part, take care of your own stuff and come, don't have the conversation, but do have the conversation, but don't have it until you can come from a place of love and non-judgment for yourself and the people you're talking to. That was a long answer. <laughs> That's okay. That is so valuable. I, I, as you were speaking, uh, spring, I was just thinking it's true. You have to, it's a, it's a, a yes. And that we've been kind of, yeah. uh, toying with this year, that phrase. And, um, it's, Yes, I I am contributing and owning that like I am contributing to the clutter and I'm going to own it and I'm going to work through it. Mm -hmm. And it would really like let's be a team to make sure that I'm being my best self and make I get I guess again kind of putting it um back giving yourself that ownership and owning that like I want to be a better person so can you help me do that by you know, mm -hmm. picking up after yourself or, you know, whatever, so we can have a better connection in whatever capacity that is. I think that's, I think that's really impactful and, and, and something that like, I'm going to try this weekend with my family, you know, we're doing craft night and all this stuff. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to do that because I want to have people over and I want it to look nice and feel good and be present, but I can't do that if the dining room table is full of crap. <laughs> So right. we're going to work together, but yes. I love that, that ownership and let's work as a team. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. Freaking rad. Well, shout out to our community member who, who asked that question. Thank you. It was an excellent one. Uh, in our bonus episode that we're going to record with spring right after this, these are some of the questions in spring. I don't know if you've seen these yet, but they are freaking good. So one question, I've acquired quite a few new bariatric accoutrements with this new life of mine. How do I determine what's actually important and what's not? Such a valid question. Such a valid question. Another one, what are some strategies to digitally declutter? Is there a right order for decluttering? Is there a best place to start and work through the clutter? Is it helpful to declutter with someone who's emotionally not attached to my stuff? Is there a correlation between tidy environment and tidy mind? What are some tips for organizing some smaller spaces? And this one very much speaks to the, the, the neurodivergent mind. Why can't I keep things in order? I will organize and deep clean a space and it looks good for a day or two and then it's right back to chaos. I'm tired of feeling unorganized and feeling overwhelmed. Help. Right. Oh I know. I'm so excited. 
These are extremely meaningful and valuable questions, right? So if you are a supporter of the podcast, if you support us on Patreon for $5 a month, or if you're a member of the Berry Nation support community, you are going to get this bonus episode whispering, answering all of these questions. So we invite you to support us. Head to berrynationpodcast.com and become a Patreon supporter or join the Berry Nation membership community and you are going to get access to this podcast episode and then you can join us for our most amazing January decluttering challenge. And I know. right now, just, I know we have, uh, we've said it before in the podcast, our annual membership oh. is on sale right now. So mm-hmm. now's the time with all of this going on. Now's the time to sign up. It is. It's uh, $349 for an entire year of supports. And we are not kidding, friends, when we say there are 80 live support events you can attend every single month. Not that you're going to go to every single one, but Berry Nation really can be that tool that transforms your bariatric journey. If you are struggling, if you are feeling alone, if you are worried that you are not going to figure this out, if there's that little voice in the back of your head that's just stressing you out about, am I going to do this? Is my tool going to work? What if I regain the weight? Berry Nation can be the tool to help you reframe that voice, to help you shine a light in this area of your bariatric life that you are really scared about and really get to the bottom of it. Shine the light on there to see what it is and find that loving and supporting community that can help you reframe that conversation you're you're having with, with yourself. The power of Berry Nation is we don't tell you what you need. We give you a menu of support to choose from because you are the expert in your patient experience. And it's about damn time that we all had the power and the tools to choose what's right for us. So we really hope we get to see you in in the community. Spring, we know we've talked about a lot here, but we always love to give our guests kind of the, the the mic at the end. What's the one thing that you are really hoping our friends, listeners, and watchers are leaving this conversation with? If your house is messy, there's nothing wrong with you. You are you are wonderful as you are there. We, if you really want to get a feeling of how many people are overwhelmed by clutter drive down the street and look at how many people are parked in the driveway probably not a whole bunch of you know like people with their gyms in there um you're not alone and there's nothing wrong with you if you have a cluttered house spring you are amazing (laughs) Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast episode. Thank you for joining us as an expert in the Barry Nation support community. If people are inspired by your words today and they would like to work one-on-one with you in a coaching capacity, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, the best way is to make sure to go to my website, tidywild.com and sign up for my newsletter. I get great feedback about my newsletter. Um, and... Um, I have an online course that includes a coaching call with me. Um, I know how online courses can be. You're like, oh, this is going to make everything better. And then you never even open it, right? Or you like go to one one lesson and that's it. But I have a coaching call in there so that I can help guide you through some of these things we've talked about today. Um, That is an awesome present to give to yourself or someone else. It's a great way to start the year. There is so much information in there. Um, And then I have one more spot for a six month client right now. I've had a ton of interest and I have a six month slot. Um, It would be a great way to start the year. So reach out to me. There is a way to sign up for a free call on my website. and send me an email, find me on social media, Tidy Wild Organizing Facebook page, Instagram. Just reach out to me. Just don't wait. Just reach out. Any one of those ways. <laughs> the best. The absolute, absolute best. And of course, you can get to know Spring more in the Berry Nation sport community if you want to just feel her out a little bit. But trust me, I've known Spring for years. You're going to, in the first 30 seconds, you will be lifelong friends with her for forever. So trust and believe, trust and believe. The the one last piece of, of housekeeping I would love to let all of you know, if you 
are leaving this episode with like your mind blown or there's just something that is sticking in your brain, we would love to know what it is. Uh, we have the ability to incorporate your voice messages into our podcast. And in 2024, we would love to, to kind of end every episode with your ahas, your takeaways, your mind blowing moments. And you can do so by leaving us a, a voice message that we can then incorporate into the podcast. Um, so I'm going to make sure I say it right. Just head to anchor.fm slash Barry Nation slash slash message. That's, I know, a very wordy thing. You can also go to the link in our Instagram bio or just open the show notes of this episode. Kind of scroll a little bit to the bottom. You're going to see a link there on your computer or on your app, you can leave us a voice message. And you can say, when Spring said this, when a when Nat said this, when April said this, I was just, oh my gosh, that blew my mind. Or maybe there is something from one of our very first episodes that has really stuck with you for, for all of these years. I can actually say that now because we've been doing this podcast for three years. If something is just really resonating with you and you really want other people to know how impactful it was, leave us a voice message so we can incorporate into all of our episodes. We're really excited uh, to include more of your voice, more of your story, more of your experience as a bariatric patient into this podcast, because that is really what this is all about, supporting one another with humor, humility, and honesty. And you've got some great takeaways, and we would love to know them. So please leave us a voice message today. Okay, I think I did it, Nat. Did I do it? You did it. Take us out, my friend. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Again, thank you all for listening, sharing, subscribing, commenting, interacting with us on all of the platforms, in the community, on Patreon, Instagram. All of it really does help us. It helps us fuel for the next podcast. It helps us get uh, more feedback and temperature checks on where the community is at. Uh, and your subscribes, your rates, your comments, they all help boost us in the podcast realm. So we are just eternally grateful for that. And Spring, again, thank you so much for joining us. This has been super enlightening, and I can't wait to see what the community thinks. And at the end of the day, remember, you've got this and we've got you. We'll see you next time. Bye, friends. Bye. <laughs>